Okay, so we're delighted that Gregory Michael Carter is here to talk about his work. We're going to put it on the hood before we put it on God. Uh, this is part of Art League's platform series, uh, which is funded by the City of Houston through the Houston Arts Alliance and the Merrick Arts Alliance. Uh, so Gregory, please go ahead. Okay, uh, my name is Gregory Michael Carter, and I am a, a Houston-born interdisciplinary artist. Uh, I work in a variety of mediums, one of which being, uh, in this case, photography and digital collage. Uh, the first thing I thought about when asked to design uh, uh, a billboard size design was a billboard from around the time I was in college. There was a <laughs> part rap group, part uh, criminal organization uh, called BMF that uh, basically funded much of what you know as the modern hip hop era and started off culturally. But they created this big billboard in the city, which ultimately ended up <laughs> being their downfall because you shouldn't, uh, there's certain things you shouldn't do when you're talking about criminal activity and you shouldn't talk about it out loud, okay? And you shouldn't, there's certain things that you shouldn't do, uh, or there's certain rule sets inside the culture of hip hop and inside the culture of these neighborhoods uh, where these things are occurring and where I take a lot of the inspiration for my work. Um, so I guess that's what a lot of this work has to do with. It has to do with these systems. It has to do with, uh, I liken these collages to uh, uh, slave quilts. Uh, slave quilts uh, many times had hidden messages and hidden meetings inside of them that were only meant for certain people that were reading these meetings to understand. So there's a lot of that going on in this work. But um, there's a lot of layering. Like uh, I heard Mo talk about. I heard Mo talk about some of the handwritten signage, you know, from the neighborhood. So there's a little bit of that going on in this collage. You know, these collages are. Uh, taken from photographs that I've taken. Like this lovely woman is from the, uh, the Vatican. And the, uh, the piece of paper behind her is from a, a Newport like cigarette box. So there's uh, a lot of this dichotomy between uh, a existing black in places like inside the uh, Louvre or inside the, uh, the Vatican Museum or places like that. Um, this, this work is also an interactive work. I decided to make it like that because I've been creating these works for some maybe 10 years or so. And I wanted to share a little bit of insight in a clever way about some of the reference points behind some of this imagery. Uh, but I wanted to do it in a way uh, that didn't seem like I was having to explain myself to you all, you know, because I think that kind of uh, in a lot of ways that can diminish it. So um, I'm welcome to any questions you might have. So I stumped all of you. Hi. Okay, so that's a drawing uh, of a Gundam, very, uh, see, I think that that's interesting when that happens, right? Because no one else out here knows what that is, you know? And black people exist in all of these types of spaces, you know? But 
the story behind that has to do with uh, I was in residency at a place in Sweden in 2017 in this rural uh, like Swedish like village. <laughs> and uh, I spent a lot of time traveling to Denmark then. There's a, a library that I like a lot there. It's called the, uh, the Black Diamond. It's really dramatic now that I think about it. But it's, a, it's basically the Danish royal family's library. So they had all of these um, artifacts there, and I take a lot of my work from that. You know, I go to museums and rip images from various things. But there was a, to make a long story short, there was a play that was going on there that uh, prompted me to think about some ideas behind uh, some more work. Uh, I did a work a few years ago called machine to retrieve reparations and it was a mostly conceptual work for sculptural work but it had to do with uh using technology for black people to re retrieve reparations which brought me into thinking about like some of these situations where like these oppressive people have been hostile and still are hostile like uh for example when i was there in denmark there was this racist play that they had going on that was causing so much trouble over there, so much of an uproar, basically because of, you know, white guilt in Denmark, you know. But um, this racist play had the N-word in it, and uh, it was all over NPR, and, uh, you know, everyone's making a big deal about it. But, but the play basically had the idea, the premise of it was that Black people would come to Denmark and invade Denmark, and, yeah, like, Black people don't know where Denmark is or what it is, you know, like we don't care about Denmark at all, you know? So like it was, this was, I was, just, you know, it just was fascinating to me, you know? And a buddy I met there was like this Fulbright scholar there had to go on. And I was so proud of him because he's so eloquent in the way he can write and speak. But he was basically able to go over there and defend black people in this eloquent way and shut all these races down. and. We went to go have a drink afterwards and but I got to thinking that um, what if black people did want to invade Denmark? What if black people did want to start being militant about some of these sorts of things? And what if black people had a Gundam, too, you know, and I was, you know, so that's the whole roundabout story about that. But I was creating work about this Gundam, too. So if you look at the website, you'll be able to find more later. But that's that's the. Uh, Short, long answer, though. No. <laughs> okay. How do you know about choosing which images will be put together? Well, um, when you start something like this, there's a general idea that you want to portray, or at least for me. And uh, I just like to use what's called ideograms so i i don't want to force anything on anyone i want people to come to their own conclusions based on their uh being able to recognize the imagery right see because it's not for everyone right not every part is for everyone you know so i hope that's helpful <laughs> guy in the back, good looking guy in the back. <laughs> the Newport cigarette boxes are, and in particular, this painting that you're looking at has to do with uh, uh, I spent some time in Japan. I think in, uh, I've spent a few months in Japan in like 2012. And by the time I was there for about a month, I had never missed black people more in my life <laughs> than I've been anywhere. Because although the people in Japan are really, really nice and like very polite people, when you get into the rural areas, they, they really don't speak English, you know? So they're really, really sweet, but you have to learn Japanese words to get across what it is you're trying to do. But 
I ran across some Newport cigarettes at a gas station in, in rural Japan and uh, had this, and they had them there because of American GIs nearby or something that they were selling them to. But um, it got me to thinking about my grandfather and his time fighting in Japan. But it also became a symbol for how black culture like just travels around the world, really. So that's what it started to mean to me. So. And I, you know, I could go on and on about Newport, but, you know, we won't, we won't do that. Okay. The car. Yeah, that's, uh. Well, this that that has to do with the first thing that I talked about, the uh, the BMF guys. This is you know their K one of the first, uh, I guess the what is this called the first page of a court filing where it has the list of all of the uh, participants of the case or whatnot. That that has to do with those guys. Those guys made 250 million dollars in the case of in the course of you know three or four years basically trafficking marijuana you know the same stuff that you know is legal everywhere now but that's another thing but they would hide millions of dollars inside these luxury vehicles and you know that's what that reference has to do with there was a case where somebody found one of these luxury vehicles years after the case and found like four million dollars inside this car you know but you have to know a special uh series of actions to open the hidden safe inside this vehicle and it had to do with the fuse boxes so that's why i used the um the diagram from the i guess i got that from a manual like a ferrari manual or something Okay. So any more questions? Thank you. Oh, you want one? <laughs> oh, no. Well, of course you have to keep in mind uh, where your work is going. And if it is, you know, this is a site specific installation. So of course I was, and I've been going, coming here for years, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> so yes, I did have that in mind. Okay, thanks Gregory. I'll borrow the microphone. <laughs>